Hi there, and welcome to the strategy portion of the Vegan Interactions Academy. Now in the psychology section, we reviewed the theory behind interacting with others and inspiring the most change possible. In this section, we're going to talk about the practical applications and how to apply that to our day-to-day -day lives and our interactions about veganism. I've had thousands of interactions with the public and I've learned a lot along the way. Now I'm not pretending to have all the answers, but I think I have a few that have helped me and my hope is that by sharing them, they may help you too. And I'm always evolving, so I'm sure my strategies will continue to evolve as well. When we first go vegan, we might be thinking most about what we're going to eat. However, I think most of us quickly find out one of the biggest challenges is interacting with non-vegans on the topic of veganism. This is where I find having a one-liner ready to go helps us a lot. Now by one-liner, all I mean is that if somebody comes up to you and says, what, are you one of those vegans? You can come back with an intelligent response that you feel comfortable and confident about. In order to find your one-liner, think about why you first went vegan. Was it something you read or something you watched? How did that make you feel? The answer to that question is your one-liner. Perhaps you watched Earthlings and it made you sad to see the way animals are being needlessly killed. Perhaps you watched Forks Over Knives and you're shocked to learn that there's no biological necessity for us to eat animals. It doesn't really matter why you went vegan. That's your personal experience and no one can take that away from you. I know when I first went vegan, I was very focused on what other people should be doing and almost to the point of saying you should do this or you should do that. I find by using I statements and explaining why I went vegan from my perspective, this is a much less confrontational way to talk to people on the subject, and people are much more likely to listen. If someone asks me why I'm vegan, I like to say I was a vegetarian earlier on in life because I didn't like the idea of eating animals. I then looked more into the dairy and egg industries and realized that they were completely unnecessary, so I chose to stop supporting them. Depending how long the interaction is, I may highlight how males are killed immediately for dairy and eggs. What's your one-liner? Let us know in the video's comments. Now that you've got your one-liner ready to go in the event anyone asks you why you're vegan, let's explore how to make ourselves the most effective voice for the animals we can be in the next videos. One of the things I've found important in my outreach work is how to keep the conversation flowing. One of the tricks I like to use is active listening. This means we're not just waiting for our turn to talk and we're listening to what the person has to say. One of the ways we can show this is by repeating or confirming what the person has just said. This will make them feel like they're being listened to and they're more likely to return the favor. I also like to nod my head along and say uh-huh while the person's talking just so they know I'm still listening. By saying uh-huh I'm not necessarily agreeing to what the person has to say but I'm acknowledging it as part of the discussion. Another trick I like to use is instead of saying no or yes but, to say yes and. You may like to try this in your day-to-day -day life. See how long you can go without saying the word no. Start listening for when other people say it. Think about how it affects the interaction. No, 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 no. By saying yes and, you're building on what the person says instead of building a case against it. What do you think? Could this be applied to your interactions? Let us know in the video's comments. See you in the next video. If we can come across as more relatable, people are gonna be more likely to listen to what we have to say. One way I like to do this is by establishing common ground. One thing I like to do to help me connect with others is to get in touch with my inner non-vegan. The reality is most of us weren't born vegan. There was a time where we believed eating animals was completely normal, perhaps even necessary. By thinking back to our pre-vegan days, we have a better chance of connecting with others. I like to go into every interaction, like I'm talking to this guy. This isn't a bad guy. There's seeds of compassion within him. And I know if I water those positive seeds, they'll naturally blossom into veganism. For instance, if someone asks me if I'm vegan, I'm quick to say I have been for the past four years, but for the first 32 years of my life, I supported these industries. By acknowledging we supported these industries too, people are gonna feel less distant from us and ultimately veganism. Another way I like to establish common ground is by acknowledging people's concerns. 
If someone says, yeah, but where do you get your protein? Resisting that knee-jerk reaction and acknowledging their concerns. Perhaps saying, I used to wonder that too. And I was shocked to learn that three to 8% of our calories are what most medical organizations say we need to get from protein. Then you can talk about all the protein you can get from plants, the world's strongest animals, for instance, elephants and gorillas, and some of the vegan bodybuilders and strongmen out there. I also like to ask, where do you think the animals get their protein from? And do you think it's more efficient to go to the plants directly versus filtering our nutrients through animals? Even if someone presents you with a justification that you've never believed yourself. For instance, someone might say, yeah, but plants feel pain. You could say, yeah, I think a lot of people think that. I looked into it, and what did it for me is that plants have no central nervous system. I also like to say, do you think you notice the difference between picking a strawberry and killing a pig? When people present us with non-vegan justifications, it's tempting to have an emotional response. If we do, people may think there's something to their concerns. If we're able to respond to non-vegan justifications calmly, logically, and get the person thinking, they're gonna be much more likely to find the truth. By sharing our personal experience with veganism, and providing a safe, non-judgmental environment for people to talk about those non-vegan justifications. We can help establish common ground and encourage people to share more. And if people are sharing more, they're thinking more. And that's what we want. Now we talked in the psychology section about one of the most powerful forces in the universe, the shame response. <laughs> So what can be done to help respond to people's shame? In this video, I'll share the two key things I do. First, I avoid the use of trigger words. I say killed instead of murdered, forcibly impregnated instead of raped, used instead of slave, and inconsistent instead of hypocrite. These are just a few of the most common examples. The idea is to use words that say the exact same thing with a less likely chance of that person exhibiting a shame response. The second thing I like to do to help manage people's shame is to watch their body language. If someone's crossing their arms, looking away, breaking eye contact, there's a good chance that that person is starting to feel that shame and we might be able to approach the same exact topic in a different way and they might open up and keep the conversation going and help keep them thinking about veganism longer.